Note to listeners, don't do what she does. Don't stick tweezers in your ear. That's not sound medical advice. She's a plant doctor, not a medical doctor. Welcome, my friends, to The Undergrowth. This is where we speak with celebrated scientists and eminent educators about plants and pests. Let us embrace knowledge together on this expedition into mysterious realms. I'm Sebastian Eugene Bartholomew, and this is The Undergrowth. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce Miss Ashley Dean, an extension specialist who focuses on field crop entomology at the distinguished Royal Academy of Iowa State University. We are discussing the insect pest trapping network coordinated by Ms. Dean in the PPEM department, and for those of you who don't know, that's an acronym that stands for People Pushing Entomological Manifestos. Is this correct, Ms. Dean? I don't think that's quite right. I think it's plant pathology, entomology, and microbiology. Oh. Well, in my line of work, sometimes you have to be wrong in order to be right 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Dean, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a field crop entomologist? Oh, sure. Um, I got my start in the agronomy department at Iowa State University, and then I took some entomology classes and I really, really enjoyed it. I somehow wound up in the entomology department for my master's degree, and then uh, I was doing soybean aphid work for that, which is a field crop pest, and I enjoyed it so much I took a job when I graduated. Always start with a question about food. My favorite uncle advised me before I left for university. If you had to jump out of a moving plane without a parachute and land in a swimming pool filled with jello or yogurt, fruit flavored or vanilla, doesn't matter, which one do you think would best break your fall and save your life? Jello. Why is that? Um, because it's bouncy. <laughs> That's what everyone always says, and everyone is always wrong. Oh. It's yogurt, the viscosity, and the way that it hypervelocitizes, falls as one plummets from an airplane, save a person every time. That's what astronauts use. Good to know. What is the insect trapping network, and how does it help farmers and others who are involved in agriculture? Yeah, so it's kind of just like it sounds. It's a network of farmers and crop consultants and some others who trap for insects. And so we do a moth trapping network in the spring, and the purpose of that is to trap for two migratory species of moths. And uh, that helps farmers by, one, we can just alert them when they get here and where they are in the state because they're sporadic. And then um, we can also predict cutting dates by black cutworm, um, which can help farmers know when to scout, when to begin scouting for cut plants. Very good. Well, I expect you are trying to capture them to eat them or to sell their little carapaces for facial ornamentation. You do set the insects free after you capture them, right? Unfortunately, no. <gasps> No, we do not set them free, and actually, they don't survive being captured. So, we just kind of dump them out of the traps. Now, why do farmers not want these little critters in their fields? The moths aren't really the concern, right? So the moths come here, and then they lay eggs, and usually it's in grassy areas. Some sort of a green tissue is what they're looking for, so that they're larvae have something to eat. So it's really the larvae that we care the most about and that's what farmers don't want in their fields because they have chewing mouth parts and they're either, in the case of true armyworms, they are chewing on the leaves so they'll just strip away leaf tissue. In the case of black cutworms, normally the problem with them is that they can cut corn plants when they're small so it actually kills the entire plant. Oh my. Do these things get big enough to take a man's arm off? I don't think so. We can all be thankful for that. How many days do you think a moth suffers all lonely and alone in the bleak depths of despair until its little heart stops and it dies far from its family and all those who have ever loved it? Only a couple of days. What a horrible couple days those must be. Oh well then, how can farmers or others involved with field crop protection get involved with the trapping network? 
So corn rootworm is our biggest insect pest of corn in Iowa. Um, we have that going on right now. I still have a couple of sets right now. So if people want to get involved right now, they could. Um, but uh, for next year, if people want to be involved, all they have to do is send an email to bugtraps at iastate.edu. <laughs> That's and clever. They can let me know that they would like to be involved. Bugtraps at iowastate.edu. Yeah, we're very creative. Indeed. Have you always liked trapping and killing things? Perhaps it gives you a feeling of power, like you're the controller of life and death or something like that? No, I haven't always enjoyed it. But now you do? Only because it helps farmers. What a do-gooder we have here on our hands. We post all of our trapping updates on the Integrated Crop Management blog. Um, so I think it's crops.extension.iastate.edu. A lot of dots, but that's how you would get there. Um, we post a lot of updates there, but also um, the corn rootworm network data will be shared on our, it's a regional trapping network, so we have a website for that. And so they can go to rootwormipm.org to get to it. Marvelous. In days of yore, there were despotic kings who would torture their maladjusted subjects in the dungeon on all sorts of devices, but we're civilized these days and we just torture insects using sticky traps. Will you explain to us what it is you have in your hand and how it works? Yes, so what I have in my hands is a sticky trap to capture corn rootworm beetles. So this is what we would use for the corn rootworm monitoring network. It is really sticky on the inside, but basically this is what it looks like when you get it. And then if you open it up, it's bright yellow and sticky. The yellow is to attract the beetles. They're attracted to this color. And then the sticky is to capture them so that they can't move and we can count them in the fields. Have you ever gotten your face stuck to that? Not my face, but my hair plenty of times. Mm, indeed. They're quite sticky. Was there a shampoo that you would recommend to uh, get sticky trap goo out of one's hair? Not a specific shampoo, just uh, any shampoo maybe shampoo twice to get all the sticky out. Man, viewers didn't know they would be getting hygienic advice today as well, but... I'm here for them, yeah. You are, thank you. Have you ever pulled a live insect out of your ear? Actually, I think I have. How do the moths know how to get to the sticky traps that you set out for them? They are attracted by pheromones. So we put a little rubber septa that's uh, loaded up with a pheromone inside the trap. And so the males are attracted to it because it's a sex pheromone. So they think it's a fem female moth. And then when they get into the trap, they get stuck to the sticky bottom. Those poor chaps. How do you sleep at night? On my side, usually. It's probably better for your back. Indeed, I most heartily thank you for your expertise and eloquence in explaining to all those intrepid learners out there how you enjoy killing small and helpless creatures with absolutely zero remorse, giant sticky traps filled with death and decay. Wait, no, 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 um, I'm sorry, I mean, Miss Dean, helping to improve crop protection for Iowans and others. We are most deeply in your debt to you and fellow extension workers at the Royal Academy of Iowa State University. Thank you, Sebastian. This is the undergrowth. <laughs> <laughs> see, I see you're getting you're, you're getting into it now. <laughs> <laughs>